what is up math person and welcome to what the math today we'll be talking about time this is chapter two in your books now time is actually a pretty complex concept to understand so what we're going to focus on is two things one is conversion of time units and two some fun facts about time at the end let's start with a little bit of history and basically let's take a look at how the time is expressed in modern world now I hope I don't have to explain to you that we measure minutes in 60 seconds, hours in 60 minutes, one day has 24 hours, one week has 7 days, and one year has 365 and a quarter days. Uh, and this is actually why we have a leap year where every 4 years we actually get an extra day. But what's interesting to see here is that look at that, there's 60 here and there's 60 here and there's also uh, 360 mm, here. Now, this is important to know because this is actually from ancient Babylonians, which was an ancient culture about 4,000 years ago. And these Babylonian pers people, persons, uh, they actually measured everything in 60s, not in 10s like we do, but in 60s. And this is where we're getting this from. So why was 60 so important to them? Well, one of the reasons is because it's actually a pretty cool number that has a lot, a lot of factors in it. If you look at the factors of 60, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 15, 20, 30. So essentially, it's a number that has lots of factors which makes doing fractions and math a lot easier. And it's actually one of the reasons why Babylonian math was even more advanced than Roman math, which actually came several thousand years after them. Uh, so that was pretty cool. And uh, the idea of having a circle with 360 degrees, like we do today, our circle is measured in 360 degrees, that also comes from Babylonians that measured it in the same way. Then we have 24 hours in a day. Now, where is that from? Well, that's actually from ancient Egyptians who measured their days in basically two units, day and night. And then each day had 10 hours. But then there was also one hour of twilight in the beginning and another hour of twilight in, at the end. And that basically made it 12 hours times two is 24. So that's where we get 24 hours from. And then seven days is actually from Judeo-Christian beliefs of the creation. So seven days of creation are in the Bible. And that's how we measure our time. Now, anything below a second, anything below a second is measured in modern ways, basically with decimal points. So for example, you can say 0 0.001 second. Anything above a year is also measured in decimal points. So everything above this, above a year becomes also decimal. So like, for example, we say, 20 years but everything in between has to be measured in this ancient ancient way which might create a problem for you on a test when you do an IB test because you sometimes have to convert things so let's try one of these conversions together actually so let's try to convert hours into seconds because sometimes you have to do this because seconds are the standard unit you have to measure things in seconds so we're going to convert a few hours let's just say two hours uh, 28 minutes and 40 seconds into standard unit of seconds. Now, one trick I will teach you is that you just remember that one hour has 3,600 seconds. So that's kind of a handy trick to remember. And also just in case, uh, one year has 52 weeks. You may not see this as often, but just remember that one year has approximately 52 weeks. But anyway, let's do our conversion. So we have 40 seconds here that just transfers directly. Then we have 28 minutes, and 28 minutes, let's use our calculator. So what we do is we multiply 28 by 60, and this gives us uh, 1680. So that is our seconds inside those minutes. So we just write them here, uh, 1680 seconds plus 40 seconds. And now finally we come to the hours, and I've already told you that one hour has 3,600 3, 3, 3, seconds multiplied by 2. 7,200 seconds. Now we just have to add this all up and we get, we get 8,920 seconds. And that is our answer for this question. And this is how we convert hours, minutes into seconds. So that should be pretty easy. But now let's look at the opposite. Let's convert uh, seconds into, let's just say minutes. So for example, let's convert 4,000 seconds into hours and minutes. So how do we do this? Well, this one is a little bit trickier because you have to try to start with the largest possible denomination, which is hours. So if you remember correctly, one hour has 3,600 seconds. So that's that we know that w that is one hour right here already. So what you do then is you find the difference between this and the hour in seconds. And that leaves us with 400 seconds to go. 
So now we have to find how many minutes are there in this. And we do this by dividing by 60. And 400 divided by 60 is 6.6666. So in other words, it's six minutes and something, but we can't really write it in this way. We have to still use seconds. So we're going to write it as six minutes. And then we're going to find a difference between 400 seconds and whatever six minutes is. And six times six is 360. So minus 360 seconds, which leaves us with 40 seconds. So in other words, this equals to one hour, six minutes and 40 seconds. So, and that's the answer. Now, some other time terms you may want to know are milliseconds and microseconds. And these express really tiny amounts of time. Millisecond is one thousandths of a second and is usually written with a small m, ms. And microsecond is one millionth of a second. And that's written as another M, but it's a Greek M, mu S. We also have other bigger units. We have one decade, which represents 10 years, at least in math. Although sometimes you hear that it's 12 years, but in math it's one, 10 years. Years. We then have a century, which represents 100 years. And millennium, which represents... A uh, thousand years. Millennium. I think I misspelled it, but that's okay. It's not an English class. Thousand years. And that's it for the theory and for the conversions, but let's now talk about some fun facts. For example, you've probably already noticed that when you're idling, when you're not doing anything, like for example in some of your math classes, but not my math class, is that time actually seems to last much longer. So idle time is a lot longer than fun time. Now, this is actually kind of true because psychologists did discover that we do seem to uh, feel like time passes really slowly when we're bored. And for that reason, that is why a lot of elevators have mirrors in them because as the building started to grow larger and larger, the time that you spend in the elevator became more and more boring and annoying. And why, what do you do in the elevator? You're not going to talk to anyone, right? You're just going to stand there. So that's why they started putting mirrors to keep us occupied, to, keep, to let us do something, basically stare at ourselves instead. And that is the reason why we have elevator mirrors. Now let's look at another fun fact. The perception of time is actually a very cultural phenomenon as well. So in, in the Western culture, in the Western world, we think of time in increments of five minutes. So a lot of our clocks have five minute increments and a lot of the uh, way we talk about things and you know even the breaks that we take, five minute breaks. But in other cultures, like for example, in Middle Eastern cultures, uh, the increment time increment is actually in 15 minutes. Or in other words, they see the world or feel the world very differently from us. So for them, time is actually a much faster process because everything for them is in 15 minute increments. And if you are from a different culture, think about how your culture thinks about time. Does your language include things like five minute breaks or is your break, your siesta, much longer than five minutes? In that case, your culture also probably perceives time much differently from us. Time also passes differently depending on where you're located, specifically how high you are. And this is actually not the time that you can notice, but it's physical time. So what I'm trying to say here is that imagine Earth or surface of the Earth being right here at the sea level. And the sea level, our time passes by, obviously in seconds, as one second, two second, three second, four second. Now imagine that you decide to go a little bit higher and you decide to start flying, let's just say uh, at the height of an airplane at 10 kilometers, and you start flying around the planet. Now because of the way space and time works and because of the th theory of relativity, which Einstein proved a long, long time ago, uh, your Time is actually approximately one nanosecond, which is actually one one billionth of a second, uh, slower than our time on Earth. In other words, if you have a twin and your twin starts flying in the sky for many, many, many years, and you stay on the planet and just chill here, your twin will actually be younger than you, or several nanoseconds younger than you, when he or she comes back to the planet, which is a pretty cool phenomenon, I think. Now, the time of our day is actually 24 hours now, but it used to be 23 hours when the dinosaurs were around. So even though our work day is, or our day day is 24 hours, dinosaurs had to deal with 23 hour day, and you know, if they had to work, that's a lot less work and a lot less fun time per day. Uh, I'm kidding. And that also means that 
140 million years from now, our days will be actually 25 hours because our planet is slowly slowing down its rotation speed due to the sun's uh, gravitational influence. And so the day will then be 25 hours, which means that the IB test will be slightly different as well. Finally, according to quantum mechanics, the smallest amount of time, or basically the tiniest, tiniest unit of time, is actually a thing. It's a thing. So there's actually a smallest unit of time, and it's expressed as something called Planck's second. Planck was a person who was very famous for quantum mechanics, quantum physics, and Planck's second equals two zero followed by 42 zeros and then a one at the end in other words it's 10 to the negative power of 43 seconds which is a tiny 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 amount of time but it's a thing okay and that is it for time chapter two of ib math studies thank you for watching please subscribe and bye bye and good luck to you